The Subtle Steamroller, a 5MEO DMT trip report posted by Connexion to Irwid.org, June 16th, 2009. After smoking 5MEO DMT a couple of times, I've been wanting to insufflate it, having heard and read so many fantastical things about it, ranging from torturously frightening experiences to heavenly bliss. Finding myself rather free of obligations and at home alone on a Friday afternoon, I decided to give it a shot. My use of psychedelics is primarily for therapeutic purposes, although, no doubt, they provided for some good recreational times as well in the past. I've been feeling kind of down on myself lately, so today I decided to dig deep and see what might be bothering me. Unlike my older batch of 5-MeO-DMT, which was a creamy colour, this sample was bright snow white, almost sugary. It was crisp, evenly sized, in tiny crystals. I cut up 5 milligrams on the dining room table, weighed with concentration and diligence on my milligram scale. I then snorted up my left nostril with trepidation at 2.10pm. The experience unfolds as follows. 2.13 First alerts and rapidly moving to a plus one. The nasal burn is rather nasty, but not quite as ferocious as 2CE. It smells like DMT, but a lot milder, which I'm thankful for. Strangely enough, the smell of DMT always reminds me of my grade 3 teacher, Mrs Simpson who suffered from an insane and disagreeable case of halitosis. She could make eyes water at 20 paces. Wow. After only five minutes, I'm already feeling sleepy and relaxed, dreamy and confused. My nose hurts, and my head feels full of... Well, I'm not actually sure. I just know it's time to lay down. 2.20 I lay on the couch, one eye cocked strategically towards the painting on the wall, relishing in the fact that the pain in my nostrils is subsiding. I'm still feeling very light-headed, dizzy and disoriented. This come-up has been a little rough and rocky, but I've felt worse on various other substances. I'm quite twitchy, and points on my face are spasming sporadically. My lips, cheeks, eyelid... It's a little distracting, to say the least. I notice that despite my amped-up condition, my heart is beating normally. Thank God. I drag myself up to write some notes, fighting the urge to do nothing. Typing is easy, almost easier than usual, which really is strange, because I feel totally disconnected and disoriented. But my fingers, they seem to be working quite well. The rest of my body feels like it's immersed in agave syrup. Weird. I feel a sting on the top of my head where I had an acupuncture needle inserted a few hours ago. There's not much happening visually, but things do look different. Similar to the way things look when I stand up too fast and feel faint. But right now, I don't feel faint at all. There isn't much in the way of closed eye visuals either. I'm listening to Boards of Canada, which I must recommend for psychedelic travelling, by the way. Music doesn't sound better or worse, just the same. I feel a little sick and shaky, but not too bad. I'm still very sleepy and dreamy though, so I go to lie down on the couch again. At 2.30, things have definitely peaked, and I'm slowly returning to the mundane condition of everyday reality. I still feel dreamy and drugged, but nothing noteworthy is happening, and this is something of a disappointment, because I'm in the mood to be moved. I consider that going deeper wouldn't be such a bad thing, and I ponder doing more. I'm reluctant to endure that terrible nasal burn again. <sighs> oh well, fuck it. I'll do a bit more. 2.40 I found it surprisingly easy to operate my scale and carefully measure out my next dose. I snort another 5 milligrams. Yes, still a crappy burn. 
Ugh. Within three minutes, I'm coming back up. Harder. Yeah, much harder this time. I stagger to the couch and flop myself down. A warm, tingling flush setting across my skin from head to toe. Time passes. It's 2.57 now, and I'm coming back to Earth. Oh, that was pretty intense. I'm able to type at this point, but it would have been quite challenging five minutes ago. I convey the experience as follows. I found myself swirling through a dreamy, squishy, reality-bending place. The boards of Canada were providing the perfect backdrop to the experience, and the music has begun to merge with all of my senses. This is unlike any other psychedelic. It's very physical. I feel like I'm in a meat grinder of sorts. My body twisting and churning through space. Although that metaphor sounds scary and uncomfortable, it is neither. I'm mostly indifferent to the physical sensations at this minute. There's a great deal of movement in my visual field, but there's little or no colour. A monochrome, morphing multiscape. Twisting and turning geometric shapes dominate my vision. But that raises the point that these aren't really visuals, so much as visions. I'm not seeing with my eyes necessarily, but rather, I'm seeing with my mind's eye. My autonomic nervous system is depressed and I must repeatedly remind myself to breathe. Most interesting is that through all of this, there is a sober part of me, an observer, sitting nearby and able to think with perfect clarity. It's as if I'm split in two, one part of me swirling through a haze of obscurity, while the other half of me sits by like a semi-concerned psychoanalyst, one leg crossed over the other, scribbling notes in a small white notebook. This sober self encourages me to stay calm through what at times are challenging moments, what at times are slightly frightening. Although immersed at this point, I am still unsatisfied. There are many strange feelings, but nothing of any meaning. Nothing that amounts to anything more interesting than a detached, disembodied delirium. 306. I return sluggishly to the computer to type which, again, I find surprisingly easy to do. My whole head is swimming, but three of my eight fingers accurately dance across the keyboard, punching out words with lightning speed. I have minor open-eye visuals, not unlike the onset of DMT, where colours are brighter and everything is clearly outlined and plastic-looking. Everything is pixelated, and I feel anaesthetised to a degree. But there is quite a lot of tension and pain throughout my body, which I guess is not unusual for me. So I stand up and stretch my aching muscles. I hang limply, bent at the waist, and release much of the tension, feeling a much-needed pull through my legs, lower back, and between my shoulder blades. It is at this very moment that some of the very therapeutic effects start to take place. Indeed, I suffer from chronic pain, and I begin to see that it is at least partially a manifestation of my inner psychological unrest. This idea comes to me with great clarity, and I realise I am not taking an active enough role in dealing with this pain. I should be exercising more, and perhaps meditating to achieve deeper states of relaxation. I then think of an employee of mine who works very hard, and I realise I probably don't give him the positive feedback that he deserves. I take him for granted. After this thought, I scurry to the kitchen to write myself a reminder to rectify this when he returns from his vacation. I also realise that my work wardrobe is getting shabby. In an effort to minimise my impact on the earth, I try to get the most mileage as possible out of my clothes, but I probably need to bite the bullet and get some new ones at some point. For all the work I do to minimise my impact on the earth, perhaps I can afford myself this small token of self-appreciation. 
yes. What mind medicine this is. There's more to this, but I'll save you from the personal details. I decide to myself in this moment, I really should do this more often. But now, I'm suddenly struck with the munchies. 3.48 I've been on a linear, easy-going come-down for the past 45 minutes, and I spent this time satisfying my munchies with an evil bowl of Doritos and pondering my life condition. I feel no ill effects as the drug departs my body, as I would for sure if I were coming down from, say, 2CE. By now, I'm almost down to baseline, and I return to my office work with renewed vigour. I take a break to stroll off down the road to pick up my mail, and talk about a movie with a very good friend on the telephone. The sun is bright and warm on this fine spring day in Spongleville. At 4.30 I'm completely straightened out, and no come down to speak of. No tension, no pain, no jitters, no lack of appetite either, and no cracked out feeling that I usually get from psychedelics. I simply feel wonderful and giddy. I begin to prepare a homemade pizza for my love, who is returning home from work shortly. I smile reassuredly to myself as I work. I'm happy and excited to share my experience with her. In conclusion, this definitely lived up to all of my expectations, although it left many questions unanswered. 5-MeO-DMT provides great therapeutic benefit, and I look very forward to doing it again soon. This was not a recreational experience for me at all. I couldn't label it as fun, but it was rewarding and enlightening. I don't suspect the DEA is particularly concerned with this one. The strange, intense, and sometimes uncomfortable effects of this material will make its use self-limiting for sure. File this one under medicine. No doubt, 5 milligrams was not enough. 10 milligrams, though, was adequate. I could have gone deeper, and next time will increase my dose to 7 plus 7. Splitting the dose was a good idea as well. I think it smoothed out the come up somewhat, and allowed me to transition into the deeper experience with greater ease. I have no doubt that in larger doses, this medicine could serve me with the terror I've read so much about, and at times, I've felt in the past myself. The ominous power of 5-MeO-DMT is well understood by this meek and humble traveller. I will proceed with great caution and respect in the future. To be honest, I can only thank a higher intelligence, perhaps God, for providing these gateways to higher consciousness.